Hey there everybody, welcome back to Wobbleville. Now, welcome back to Middle Earth here with another one of these Monster Mini Mayhem. Big old trolls here. We got them mounted on a 60mm base, just like this other Mordor troll. We're gonna do a similar thing, if I can remember what we were doing here with the, the skin tones, also with all of the, the armor. See the rust effects that we did. So we're gonna try and make him uh, look about as much as we can like this guy right here we're going to be using most of our standard type of colors here radiance yellow green magenta violet turquoise and blue <coughs> down here actually I have a little bit of the ultramarine blue here still but indigo the mars black van dyke brown over here probably going to throw some more van dyke brown out there probably also got to put some more brown matter out here uh, we got the and that's the uh, perlene black, that really dark green. A little bit of Indian yellow down in the corner. Terra Rosa up there. You got your billet yellow pale over there. And the uh, pre-glaze is fairly simple. We'll, we'll throw some perlene black either. Armored Wolf. Sorry that it's so uh, sorry that it's so late. That was not the way this was supposed to go. I thought I was going to be starting over an hour ago. Hey Gandalf, how you doing? So we've got some more trolls here. Again, these are from... Mini Monster Mayhem, not Monster Mini Mayhem, but Mini Monster Mayhem. And again, we just uh, threw this together as fast as I could tonight. So nice to see you again, Gandalf. Hey there, Landrast. Yeah, just threw one of these guys together so that we could try and uh, do something with him. Here, let's uh, let's just kind of start throwing down some pre-glazed stuff. And we'll keep it pretty darn simple. Here, let's get a little bit of our thinner out there. Again, like I said, I'm probably going to have to put some more of that uh, Van Dyke Brown out here. I just used the... Oh, actually, I did use a couple of the... Well, what remained of some of the basing bits from the Army Painting Series that we just got started uh, yesterday. Hey, Crazy Wolf, nice to see you again. So, well, I don't know... If I'll have a chance after the stream tonight to and edit and render that video, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And again, like I said, we'll try and get some uh, perlene black onto the uh, troll itself for a little bit of skin tone and this and that. We'll also be using a little bit of our indigo for sure. Uh, so, uh, so again, what kind of brushes were you going to get? Uh, let's see here. Let's do some... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's just keep going with this. This is relatively absorbent because even this stuff right here, that is the Daz Air Dry Clay. So that's... I don't think you could safely say it's even more absorbent than, say, Sculpey. Or at least at least the same, if not maybe a little bit more. Hey, Nganes, how you doing? Well, Nganes... Uh, oh, look at this. You actually get to be here from the start. Yeah, and again, this is our usual number eight round. I mean, look, you can see this is basing materials from the last couple of videos right there. Uh, that's uh, some of the, uh, oh, some of the MIG ammo mud. Yeah, I've just been experimenting with that. Now, oh, Armored Wolf, uh, that container of tile grout actually came at about, I don't know, nine o'clock or something like that today. Uh, so that came really fast. Uh, we'll give that a shot. Uh, and Ghani's, uh so Nganes, yeah, the, usually the Thursday stream is the, the late one, but given the situation here, uh, I would pretty much say that there's not going to be any normal time streams for well, quite some time. <laughs> there's definitely not going to be any on uh, yeah Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If those happen, those are all going to be late night streams like this one here. Well, we'll be uh, once we get done with with this portion. Then, of course, we're going to be breaking out the the filbert brushes, and of course, well, then eventually the the liner brushes, both from Princeton. So yeah, don't be surprised if all of these streams are are going to be late night. It'll, it, probably even the next two weeks or so. That's very very likely now. Okay, we're talking about perlene black here on the, well, at least some on the skin. So I'm going to start introducing that here. 
Ah, here we need some more of our green here now. Of course, uh, this is 3D printed, so we can get away with mm, maybe a smidge more thinner than I would normally put. We're also going to have to get some indigo here on the armor. Probably indigo mixed with a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown again so that we can eventually start to... Well, we're going to wipe this away with our makeup sponges, and then we're going to do our dry brushy stuff on there with the filbert brushes. Uh, I see. Oh, we got to go back to our perlene black. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, it's really a tragedy. I don't care. If the color goes somewhere, it has to go everywhere anyways. So, uh, and we got to reflect. Even when it's kind of rusted, corroded metal, it still needs to reflect a little light because it is metal after all. I'm actually going to go back over here to a little bit of the brown matter because, once again, I don't really care. It's just, it's just a backdrop. That's all it is. That Those nights you saw, those were pretty much just indigo, mostly uh, for the pre-glaze on those guys. Uh, well, Bithron, I hope that you actually get a chance to do that. I know it, it, there's been some false starts with that, right? You were just about to, and then, well, no, can't do that. So hopefully that's all going to work out for you. So I think we're all caught up. Sorry if I missed anything in the chat there. No, I just actually, I missed, uh, I missed what acid burn... Okay, okay, I think we're caught up now. Again, if uh, if I miss something in the chat, you can always pop that back in there again. Yeah, I guess you can always do the highlight my message too, right? Or uh, tag me. That's the other one. Yeah, you can tag me, and that way it's just a little bit more noticeable. So, Eric, I hope that you're doing well. And Eric, if as always, if you want to post your uh, your link there to the jewelry, that would be fantastic too. I think we got all of our darks in place. So these. All just a whole bunch of black there, right? Well, now we're going to start taking some of this away. Boy, you can really see just how absorbent that Daz air dry clay is. That's pretty wild. Now, here, let me get some more of my sponges out here. Where did that... There's my container. And there's the makeup sponges. Put those over there, get them out of the way. So again, we're just going to wipe some of this away. We're not looking to wipe all this stuff away. And of course, we've, <laughs> unlike the acrylics, we have some time, right? In fact, if anything, you want to kind of give the oils a little bit of time to set, maybe, before you do this. Kind of depends on how, well, staining the color is. If it's Egyptian violet, indigo, especially Williamsburg indigo, Indian yellow, well, those, it's a different story. Those things will stain like crazy. There again, we're just we're wiping some of this away. We leave some of it behind. And unlike, say, uh, the whole Zenithal thing, like all the cool kids talk about, here we can actually use this. We can actually blend with this. Whereas a Zenithal, you spend most of your time just painting over it. Whereas here, this we're actually going to utilize this this pre-glaze right here. We're actually going to be working with it. Uh, using the, the makeup sponges here, which of course, uh, these are the, the latex-free ones. They don't tend to crumble and <coughs> do other <coughs> weird stuff like that. Which we didn't really know there was a difference when I first started doing this stuff. But I uh, guess there is. And then we're just going to take some of this away. So, Teals, I hope that uh, everything's going good there. And again, I, I don't know if you had a chance to post any of your recent stuff or not. The chat kind of started moving really quick there. Here are some more sponges. And then this really just changes so quickly once we start to do the, again, the dry brush stuff with the filbert brushes. Now, thanks, Bitron. These... Uh, I haven't had a chance to print out the unarmored trolls. That's the neat thing about this particular... Uh, I don't know. I think this is maybe... I don't remember which month it was. Could have been August, September, October. I think it was maybe September or August or something like that from M Mini Monster Mayhem. 
but each of these poses there's several different weapon arms there's also different uh, uh, some of them don't have armor so it's like the same pose but with no armor and like I said several different weapon options there's this there's a mace there's uh, a bunch of different stuff that you can do uh, here I just got more sponges Uh, I think we're all set there. Almost ready here. Now I had to kind of do all this at the last second here. I basically just had to throw him on a base and just throw some little bits on there. Again, it was the leftover printed bits uh, from our... I uh, wish I had, again, more of these. I, I already have printed another one of these. I actually have to cure that. And I've got another... I got uh, another thing I'm going to print out with also with more of these little skull piles. And then, of course, these are really, really cool. These things here, like the little the spears with banners on them uh, inside the skull piles, those are really, really cool. Again, those are from Make It Epic Basing. And again, we're just about there. So you can see we've got kind of a decent amount of shading. Remember when we did all the Ossiarchs here? And a lot of people said just even after the pre-glaze, they were pretty much sold on that. Then we did the little dry brushy stuff that we're about to do here. And they said, well, you had me at that point. And now here, I'm just trying to use these smallest sponges. They're just trying to get down into some of the crevices here. Mostly just because uh, if I can get rid of some of the paint there, our dry brushy stuff is going to have something to stick to. All right, here we go. Let's let's begin. I think I take some of that radiant blue here, touch of the green, a little bit of the yeah, and just a touch of the violet here. I'm going to make sure there's not a whole lot of paint on this brush. And then we have to have a very, very, very light grip on it. I mean, this is a light grip, right? And look where we are. N none of this right here, right? That not a, that's not a gentle grip on the brush. It's also not really going to let you do much in the way of a dry brush either. But you can see, see that darker color that's starting to get on the end of the brush? With each and every one of these brush strokes. See that darker color? That's It's mixing with that pre-glaze so you can see the difference between that and this side that's the difference between something like this and that that zenithal stuff because again instead of painting over that pre-glaze we're actually going to work with it here you can see the same deal right here on this armor now we can change uh, this to uh, see look at it, see how much uh, dark paint there is on the end of that brush but I don't mind sometimes if the color actually changes on the brush here because, well, we want to get some variation there. Here, I'm going to just go back and freshen that up just a bit. Hey, Blue Dorrit, nice to see you back. So those just get chucked in the garbage. It's a one-use kind of thing, uh, especially since you get a whole bag of a hundred of these. Yeah, so you get a whole bag of a hundred. I'm cutting these into six to eight pieces. So you're getting somewhere between, you're getting around roughly 700 sponges per bag. And I just get them off of Amazon. Again, they're, they're the latex free sponges, those aren't quite so crumbly. And obviously, I think for other folks, they'll be able to make those last uh, longer because they're not painting quite as many miniatures as I am. And again, everybody, I get please uh, be sure to check out Lethal Shadows Gaming. That's uh, you're not gonna have to do any kind of prep stuff right? unless it's a uh, well, maybe it's a on a Tarask there might be right Lethal Shadows. There there may be some pieces that have to be attached, but for the most part, all you'll have to do is just slap some primer on there and start painting. So again, look at all that dark paint on the end of the brush. See, that means the, the pre-glaze is mixing with what we're doing. So 
So, all right, here we go. There's nice little bit there. See how that's uh, blending with the existing color? Also, change the angle of attack here so that we can kind of maximize what we can do with our little uh, dry brush stuff here. And what is this, uh, 24 minutes ago, even with the raid and everything else, there was uh, there was no paint on this whatsoever. It was just primer. In fact, as of uh, 10 o'clock tonight, this thing, this thing was, well, here, it looked uh, more like, let me see if I can find the other one here that's uh, been prepped but not actually worked on here. Of course, it's not revealing itself to me. Here it is. So yeah, but as of uh, about three hours ago, it was this. He just kind of looked like that. So it happens fast. Hey, War Shadow, how you doing? So yeah, War Shadow, those uh, two classes that we did. Again, that was part of Warfare Weekend, so we really appreciate Warfare Weekend doing that little bit of a charity thing. Uh, I guess it was a good thing they did because literally the same day I went to do those classes, the camera that I use here died, so we have to get another camera to replace that. So we appreciate, again, Warfare Weekend. There, so it's already starting to change a great deal there. And of course, well, you, you can see the reference photos down in the corner. That was the the troll that we painted the first time around. And if you want to watch that session, all you have to do is just check out the highlights. Every highlight is saved. It's sort of like a YouTube channel, in a manner of speaking. Obviously, I can't do things like I uh, can't do uh, was that playlists, that sort of stuff. I can uh, obviously there's a thumbnail, so you just kind of peruse through the videos. You see a thumbnail of what you want to watch. And uh, Recoil has been busy doing that, catching up on some past episodes. Yeah, let's get the again. Uh, look, you see all that dark color there. That means it's mixing with that pre-glaze that we threw down. And we got to get some over here on his. Like, of course, this is really helpful for areas that are super hard to reach. Well, you can really see there's a lot of pre-glaze right there. So we'll just go back and grab some of this. And when we say less is more and more is way too much with the oils, that's really serious. We, we really mean that. You don't want to be chucking a whole lot of paint on here. Now, first of all, it's going to take forever to dry. Also it's just going to be that much more difficult to get subsequent applications of paint on there because uh, you'll just have way more than you need. It's not like acrylics. More of this here. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, there's another piece of armor over here. Then we'll have to try and start thinking about some of the skin tone. Then we're going to head back around to the armor again and try and uh, boost that a little bit later. Then we also have to start thinking about start to start thinking about some of the weathering that we might do with some of our rust effects. And here, let's do a little bit more underside here. And still have to sort of think about reflected light here, even though it's not super reflective. Here we'll we'll have to figure out what we want to do on that shield. Do we want to just throw a white tree of Gondor on there, or what do we what do we want to do? And for now, I'm just going to throw some lighter stuff in that direction, but i got to get me some fresh paint on there. Hey, Ogre, how you doing? Nice to see you again. I'm not sure, uh, I don't know, did you get a chance to see the other, the other one of these that we worked on, which was uh, really a blast? Oh, I think that was probably about a month and a half ago we painted him. I don't know, maybe it wasn't quite that long ago. Not quite so long. Here, we're just going to start to uh, lighten this up. Might also throw a little bit of brilliant yellow pale into this. Even though this looks like it's significantly lighter, it's really not actually all that light. 
Because if you look at it next to actual white, well, that's really different. Here, we're actually going to throw a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale. A tiny bit lighter. A couple areas here again, we might even take one of these makeup sponges and make sure we don't have too much paint on the brush. So thanks again, Armored Wolf, for posting the, the link to the YouTube channel. I like to... Uh, actually, I'm going to be taking one of the Spacecape videos, as this one right here. I've been able to cut it down to about an hour and 40 minutes or so. So that's going to be going up on the YouTube channel tomorrow. And guess what? All the same ideas that we use on our miniature painting goes into the 2D art. Couple more areas of light right here and also for here. Then we have to start thinking about uh, what we're doing here on the rocks. Even though we're going to be putting some of that flock and such, just like we did on the other one. So we don't want to spend a whole lot of time painting the base, right? That's not really, really necessary. Alright, now we're going to get into maybe some of the skin tone stuff here. About a little bit of... Yeah, we'll throw a little bit of the violet in there just to make sure that's not too green-ish. There's not a whole bunch here. to make sure we get some of the paint off of there. Again, got a really... Uh, yeah, so I gotta get some more of it off of there. There you go. Uh, so, Arid, oh, actually, Arid, uh, I know you had a meeting today. Hopefully, that ooh, went at least vaguely <laughs> the way you had hoped it was going to. Because that was, well, sorry, Monday, I mean. Because now it, well, it's Tuesday here. It's 127 here in the morning on a Tuesday. I think, yeah, that's also got to be a little smidge of some skin tones there. So I think this guy actually might have even more armor than the other guy does. What about this third guy here? Yeah, he's about the same as this one. Nah, there it is. Oh, there's, a, there's a couple other surfaces I seem to remember that might need some of this. Like I said, we'll, we'll be going back into all this later on. We're just trying to uh, develop this equally along the way. We're not looking to just paint one tiny part of them and that's it. That's another way to not have an army or even just a miniature take half of your lifetime to paint. Now, I understand that people like to see some kind of progress at the end of the their work session. Okay, I painted the face, or I painted this part of whatever, which is understandable, but that's also going to make things take a really long time. Painting the whole thing at once, well, that's why it looks like this after 32 minutes, including the raid. <laughs> so again, 32 minutes ago, this was just primer. There was no paint on this at all. Now the question is, do we already want to start thinking about some of our rust? We'll obviously be throwing some more warm tones in on the skin, but I think we're actually going to, before we start to pile too much stuff here, we're going to start working on some rust effects. That means brown matter, for sure, and not terra rosa, especially in this first batch here. So there's the brown matter, maybe a little more. A little bit of the Terra Rosa, not too much at this stage. Different colors take different amounts of thinner to turn into a pin line wash. And again, whether it's like this, or where's our uh, BT7, or something like this. It, it's this, we're using the exact same, it's, it's the same. There is no difference between what we're doing right now and what was done on that BT-7 or the other troll. Now here, let's see if we can just tap that, see how that uh, expands all on its own. 
throw some of that in here. And sometimes you just got to let it do its own thing, uh, especially with a pin line wash. You basically got to let it do whatever the heck it's going to do. Lots of thinner, no brushing this on, just literally tap the brush on there. Let it do whatever the heck it's going to do. Obviously, we're thinking about crevices, places where water might uh, collect. Sort of the obvious thing, especially here, maybe on the interior. See that? Ooh, I think we need a little more thinner. See that? Look, I just, uh, it just did all of those armor plates. And of course, we don't have to worry about the edge on that because, well, this is oils, not acrylic. So don't have to worry about that either. And here we're going to get a plenty of this. Uh, here, let me get a little more Terra Rosa. And then back to our brown matter. And all I can do is just touch the brush there. That's it. Let's do that maybe on this shield as well. And this will be... I think the last time we had about three phases worth also too that was on one of our army painting series here so we did a whole bunch of rust and corrosion we'll be doing that actually again believe it or not on our current army painting series so that is on the patreon page uh, we just did the basing episode just the other day then we'll get into the uh, color test figure. It's going to have a lot of glowing sets. It's going to be uh, this this interesting little combination of uh, fluorescent glowing light and uh, corrosion. Because well, that's that's Army of the Dead for you. And again, stuff like this. See, look at that. How that's all kind of spidery right there. I didn't have to do anything. It just uh, it did that all on its own. This is where the oils just save you so much time because you don't have to work so hard. Let the let the oils do the work for you instead of you having to do everything. There again, just uh, we'll get a little more thinner into this so that it's gonna flow some more. There we are. So this will have its own sort of contrast from, say, the skin tones if they do have a hint of green on them because you're, you're putting this reddish-orange here. What's interesting, it's going to go from looking really, really wet to really dry because it's a pinline wash, so there's actually not a whole lot of paint on that brush. Speaking of paint, hey, paint water, how you doing? Yeah, paint water. It's crazy because uh, this is 39 minutes in. 39 minutes ago, it was just primer. There, and, uh, you know, so it would be interesting to do one of these in one of the two-hour uh, two Zoom classes, wouldn't it, paint water? And everybody, please get paint water smaller to follow as well. Now, see here? Right on the edge, see what I can do. I can take a brush that has no paint on it. Oh, look at this. It's almost like I'm blending. I'm just uh, in places where there's a little bit of an edge there. Say, so, hey, you know what? Here, let's uh, like this. See that? Sitting right over here. We'll just uh, sort of incorporate that into the already wet paint that's uh, there. Now, yeah, paint water, it's... Uh, here, let me see if I can... I can zoom in once more. Okay, that's good. So we can get a little bit closer now that we're sort of past the... the messy pre-glaze phase. Yeah, paint water, the, the pre-glaze on this was pretty darn simple. There was not not a whole lot going on with the, the pre-glaze. Now, let me look at... So what do we do with that? Okay, we will get... Oh, some of the... 
brown matter, perhaps maybe even a little bit of the... Uh, it's a little bit of the Egyptian violet there. Sort of dry brushing that on. And now I'm going to go something like this, because uh, we don't want that to be too too much of an orange here. And there, okay, so that's going to hopefully contrast nicely with the skin tone. And again, so all that starts to blend, but just on its own. I'll throw some of this over here, too. And all over again. We're going to lighten that up too. Not, not right now. Not right now. That's a, don't be hasty. Don't be hasty, little hobbitses. And again, everybody, please give Paint Water Smiley that follow armor. We'll just throw the link in there for you so it admits uh, nice and easy. Let me see. If, do we want to go? little more with this yeah gotta stay away from the yellows on that yeah so paint water uh, as of 10 o'clock my time this guy just it is just this he I didn't even have the the support knobs filed off or anything like that that's how quickly we prepped them, stuck them on this base. And now, uh, what, 42 minutes in, this is already what he's looking like. Like you, like you always say, paint water, don't blink. If you blink, you are, uh, you're going to miss something. Yeah, these are from Mini Monster Mayhem. I, I always, for the longest time, kept saying Monster Mini Mayhem, <laughs> just, just because. <laughs> now we also have to start uh, getting some different colors onto our. Now we're gonna wait on that. We're gonna start doing some stuff on the skin tones, getting some warmer greens on there. So we're gonna take the uh, radiant green here. And a smidge of, there we go, a little bit of that Indian yellow. Huge surprise, more dry brush. There you go, some, some of our darks restored. Swing this back around, and I think now we can start to maybe think about doing some more of our rust here. And this will have a little more, a little more Terra Rosa in it. There. Maybe straight up Terra Rosa at this point. It's, it also is our skin tone color, kind of a primary skin tone color that we use. Get rid of that little bit of fuzz right there, and okay, away we go with some more of our pin line wash. Now, I might even throw just a smidge here of the radiant yellow into the. Mm, touch more and a little bit of the Indian yellow now there's there's Kathy everybody say hello to Kathy she's in the chat I had just looked a second ago didn't see her there but everybody say hello to Kathy there she is uh, okay there we go again everybody please say hello to Kathy it's a I guess it's going to be a difficult sleeping night, so everybody try and keep Kathy company here on stream. Okay, and we'll do some more here. So again, that's our lighter rust core that you see there. Oh, let's do some down here too. Also, uh, maybe a little bit more here on these armor plates. So Kathy's there in the chat. Everybody uh, say hello to Kathy. And of course the Sciocast Kathy miniatures are on the Reaper site. So uh, we actually uh, painterly get sent me a few of the Sciocathies as we call them. And I'm going to try and get uh, one of those prepped up. Maybe that's what we'll 
either paint done Thursday or Friday, probably Friday, and that would be the late night stream. Because uh, I'm not not really holding out any hope for doing uh, the early stream on Friday and Saturday of this week. Again, uh, let's see, we're going to let the Look at that, the lighter rust coat. All I have to do is just touch it. I basically touched it in three places, and it, went, it just expanded. Don't have to brush it on. You can just literally drop that. It's just going to expand all on its own. I'll probably do one more application of something lighter here. Ah, there you go. See that nice... Uh, that nice bright rust color in there. We, we don't want to completely overpower all the darker rust stuff that we did. So who knows? Well, hopefully, I don't think Kathy wants to still be awake. Uh, apparently, I don't know, I guess the eclipse happens. It starts to happen at 4 something o'clock in the morning here. At least I think so. I think 4.17 or something in the morning is when that's supposed to get underway. And here's again some more of our... But look at that, that's already started to essentially dry over there. But it's really more like setting, not quite dry. More of our... there we go, there's more of that lighter rust color but we don't want to completely wipe out all the metal stuff either. It's got to maintain a little bit of a balance. Hey, Anthos, how you doing? Oh, and actually, Acid Burn, boy, I hope Acid Burn is still here. Because Acid Burn was in the chat just a second ago. So hopefully Acid Burn's still around. Do, oh, yeah, we're going to... we here now. We did, uh, did that on his hand, but not as much there. Okay, and where's my blending brush that I was using? It was this one. No. It's probably this one right here. Uh, oh, geez. Sorry about that recoil. But, uh, well, glad that you you have uh, both of them. And thanks, of course. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. So, uh, like I said, we'll try and prep at least the, the one Sio, Kathy, for either a Friday or Saturday stream. Ah, there we go. There's Acid Burn. So Acid Burn saying hello to Kathy. Ah, yeah, there's another area down here. Again, gonna look at that. Just Touch the brush there, let it do its thing. Guess what? We can do that on this shield here. So you just, uh, all I have to do is just touch it to the surface and it will do all the rest. Now, Antho's going into lurk mode. Oh, yeah. I never, I thought I had already gotten some of the. Lighter rust colors down here, but uh, apparently not. So we'll get to it right here. Yeah, and there we are. Okay. So as always, we want to say thanks to everybody that's all contributed to the fun there. All the folks that got the Fort Wapple t-shirts. Again, all of the, the kind folks that were getting the, the various Kathy tribute miniatures there from first Dark Sword and now Reaper. Again, don't want to do too much of the lighter rust color here. There will be one more go round with this. That's where we're gonna take uh, just a bit more of the uh, bit more of the radiant yellow, add that pretty much to this mix. And just go one, one more level lighter in a few places, not everywhere, just a few places. So he's hoping that Kathy's going to be able to 
get herself back to sleep there. Hmm. Ah, yeah, it's a little more up here again. Oh, we're gonna maybe do a little couple of jots of that rust effect out here, and then again to fade some of that. I think. Uh, well, I yeah. Here, we'll just shove that brush down in there. Do whatever; it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me take a looky here at previous example. So you can see we did do one one level a little bit lighter on the rust. You can see all the little scratches and dings and dents that we were able to put in there. Now as we let that next application of the rust have a chance to set, let's, let's start doing some stuff back into the skin here I think. And uh, Ah, this is what we use, the radiant violet. We'll mix it with this yellowish green, and wow, that's a uh, talk about a nurgly sort of color right here. That's that's very nurgly. Wow, yeah, that's that's super nurgly that color. Oh my gosh! And now we're gonna let's start to bring out some texture here. There's a lot of fantastic texture, skin texture here on the uh, mini monster mayhem trolls. Okay, and this was printed out on a Sonic Mini 4K with the usual Soraya Smoky Black resin. That, uh, well, as it gets colder here, these, this, well, any time you have temperature, weather changes and stuff, that's where the Soraya Smoky Black kind of comes to the fore. There, every single resin's gonna have positive things, and it's gonna have things that are not so positive. There's zero, zero resins out there that are perfect for everything, or every condition, or every printer, or even every type of miniature. It, that just does not exist. There's too many variables, too many printers, too many weather conditions, uh, and even the way things are sculpted. You can have the ideal printer, the ideal resin, and depending on how something is sculpted or whatever, that uh, that can also impact the printing process. And again here, those uh, become too pronounced. See, I can just do a little bit of tap, tap, tap there with a blending brush. Now, let me see what we can do over on this side over here. There we go. So I was uh, going to ask Kathy how that, if that extra bracing under the knees was helpful, or if that was just, uh, if that's already been taken away. Oh, you know what we didn't do here? Uh, somewheres. Now there's a, yeah, there's a little, there's, see, look at, there's enough of our, Green left on there to actually be able to do something with that. And we're just going to throw a little bit of some lighter texture in here. Oh, this face, I think we did something almost like a bit of a violet type color. Inside the, uh, the mouth there. Yeah, something like that. And again, while this seems really, really light right now, it's actually, again, not the lightest color that we can put there. We can actually go lighter. There, again, the blending brush to it. And now maybe we'll think about some much lighter colors along the edge of this. And again, we're going to vary that. See, we're not going to just do the entire edge because otherwise, if we want to do things like that, right, little, little chips and cut marks and that sort of thing, uh, 
it's going to make a lot more sense than if there's this really neat edge and then all of a sudden there's, well, what's this thing? Just coming right off of that edge. Uh, that's something, something a little bit like that, right, Arid? Ah, there we go. There's Kathy sees it, and Kathy says hello to Arid. Lighten this up, too. I have made a little bit more on the shoulder there. I mean, this is the upper reaches here. It should be getting a little bit more light. So that makes sense. And they're getting a couple little more cut marks into that. Let's do the same down here, the armor that's on the hand. Uh, in fact, uh, maybe the lighter areas here. That's where the rust has been worn away, because that happens with the rust. Now, uh, yep, here there was, uh, well, it's been basically an entire month of Monday here. Well, on top of all the other months of Mondays, but... Yeah, pretty much uh, almost every day of the last three weeks here has been just uh, one Monday after another. Uh, I guess we can we can be grateful there wasn't as much Monday as there could have been. There could have actually been more Monday in there, but it seems like there's not that that Monday going to happen. Oh, here we go. We never. Ah, look at that. See? Oh, look at how that stands out. Same, uh, he, ah, there we go. See that? See, just a few little areas there instead of just one continuous line. You can see we've really established a lot of chipping and beat up stuff here in no time at all. Really doesn't take terribly long. And what are we, uh, oh yeah, this is uh, 1 hour 24 minutes in. Yeah, and he had, again, no... No paint on him whatsoever when we first began, less than an hour and a half ago. And that includes raids and all the other fun stuff that's already happened here on the stream. In a bit here, we'll, we'll also uh, get back into some of the lighter rust colors. Because now all of a sudden, our rust is starting to look... Uh, very dark now that we've got all these lights on there right so it's you see the context we're talking about right if you were to just paint say the head and nothing else you wouldn't be able to see all of this now they all of these lighter colors in contrast to all of the darker rust so that means we can lighten up that rust a smidge this uh edge another edge again where we're going to try and see do these little uh broken edges to it there. Uh, so actually, Irid, uh, I, maybe you might have actually headed out there, but I was also wondering, I, you had a, a meeting that, that you were doing today. There was something like that today, and I was hoping that that might have uh, gone okay for you. I wasn't sure. Uh, you know what might also uh, probably throw some some rust over there too. And now we're gonna throw some over here. And now let's do some of the fletching on the arrows. Ah, uh, yeah, Arid. That, uh, doesn't that sound about right? Uh, the, the way things have been, did that actually it was a surprise, but then again, were you really surprised? Just the kind of the way things have gone, you say, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's about normal. Should almost expect it. And the, at a certain point, right? You can only uh, only so many surprises. Now here again, we might do some kind of a Gondorian symbol on there. Might not. I'm not going to spend too much time painting the rocks there, which again are just the Daz Air Dry Clay. Now, 
Now, sorry, Ira, that's, uh, I mean, you kind of gear yourself up, right? You, you get yourself mentally prepared for all that, and then it says, oh, yeah, well, not so much. Now, we're going to catch a few little lights here. I don't think we really did any of the lightest stuff. Also on these elements here, too. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. Uh, oh yeah, definitely arid. That's uh, it, with, especially with the way things are going. A little bit extra sleep really would have been nice to have. So steal it. This uh, this always reminds me of those crazy bats that the uh, the onis were for wheeling there. There we go. Uh, so Bithron, this is a Mordor troll right here. So I've, I figured some sort of a Gondolorian symbol probably be the best thing for it. Now, of course, uh, the, the nice thing about the printing aspect is if I do want something like this for more of a... Well, I, we already have a... Oh, that's right. Actually, uh, Bithron... The unarmored ones might be uh, good for the Gundabad style trolls. So that was the other one that I was thinking of. Uh, Bithron is a little bit of Rohan. I mean, they were at the Black Gate. In some ways, I was almost kind of thinking that first, just because of the shape being round. So let's see what happens here. How's about... Oh, we do. We do actually have a little bit of the uh, thalo green here. So well, let's just see what happens here, Bithram. We'll throw a little bit of a. Well, let's warm that up a smidge. There we go. A little bit of Indian yellow. Okay. So now there's a little bit of a greenish tone to that. There we are. And, of course, I mean, uh, well, well, of course, uh, I guess I could have gone red because of all my red shields of Urkin Bran. Uh, let me see. So, oh, thanks again, Elite. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's just, it's unfortunately one of those, one of those kind of nights. Let me see. Do I have, oh, I have another Rohan guy here. Where is he? No, that's not him. There is one other one that's sitting. Oh, here it is. So we've got, you know, that sort of a shield. There we could try and do something like, oh, I never never did do the foliage on this guy. We need to do that. Here, let me maybe put that over here somewhere. Now, what did we do here? We still did do some reflect. Yeah, we did. Uh, you know what? Before I get too far along here I think I will get into our lightest rust color so we'll uh, grab some of that radiant yellow throw that into our rust here maybe a smidge of Indian yellow just to make sure it doesn't get too pinkish and now let's find some of the areas of our lightest rust and we're almost gonna do a little bit of tap 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 kind of the same like what we've been doing with all of our lighter colors but uh, now with our rust let uh, some of that get down into the crevice there a little more over here so yeah you can see we're doing sort of the final areas of our rust Based on what I see, like right here, okay, I'm not going to add a bunch of this lighter stuff there because we have this highlight over here. This is maybe not a bad place to add some. Because in some ways I actually needed a slightly lighter color over here, but it's just going to be a lighter rust color instead. Uh, oh, there, Kathy's going to try and get back to sleep. 
So everybody say good night to Kathy and again wish her luck on getting back to sleep. So here's hoping that she can do that. And again, thanks to everybody that's uh, done so much to to support us here between the uh, the Reaper and Dark Sword Kathy miniatures, the uh, Adepticon Fort Wapples shirt, all that stuff. We really appreciate that. All right, well there. A little bit of that lighter rust color down here, but not too much. You know, I might even here, I'm going to try and get some of the paint out of the brush here. So, right here, see there's a bunch of little dots there. Now we've kind of meshed some of that together, but not all of it. There's still, you can see a little bit of a brush stroke in there. Same over here. Uh, again, we just plopped a bunch of our lighter rust color. Now we're going to move that around. Uh, sometimes it's interesting to have that lightest rust color sort of in the center of that little bit darker rust color. And of course, Armored Wolf has uh, been showing me some fabulous dice bags where, where he does all that rust on the on the metal work. So again, everybody, please check out Armored Wolf on Etsy. And or, sorry, Armored Wolf Productions on Etsy and also on Instagram, so you can see all the fabulous, fabulous dice bags with all the incredible, fantastic metal work. There, okay, so um, light down here. So here's hoping that Kathy can get herself some sleep. And oh, here we're gonna throw a little bit more of the lighter rust color down in there. And then also over here, because uh, I don't think I actually want to get lighter metal colors. I'm just gonna get a lighter rust color over there, just reasons. Maybe even here on the big old hammer. Same over here. Yeah, we'll just uh, let some lighter rust work its way in there. Uh, this is also another thing that, uh, well, like anything else, weathering, chipping, all that kind of stuff, it's sort of easy to get a little bit too happy with it and do a little bit too much of it. So we're going to try and not overdo all of the fun rest. It, it's really fun to do it. It's always very fun till somebody gets hurt, which is your miniature, because there's too much rust and other things on there. You know, enough to kind of get the point across is really what you're looking for. Touch more right here. Uh, what about over here? What about right there? Yeah. I think it, well, a little bit more of our rust on that side. We'll have to get some more uh, skin color around them here too. Again, a few little dots of our rust there. Let me see if we can get some more down on these uh, lower pieces of armor. I'm also going to throw, again, the rust up here so that the, whatever, the little loincloth or whatever, that actually, uh, that stands out by the lighter rust color. Ooh, here's another place we could throw some of our lighter rust color. That's going to separate these two armor plates via just the rust color. And I think uh, we'll try and work some more in here on his helmet, maybe up by his face there. 
Not quite sure where we want to get his eyes. I'm going to look at the other one here. Let's see. I think that's where the eyes are going to have to be. Let's uh, go with some of this, well, yellow right here. Let's see how this works. For there. And then I think we'll do the other one over here. And then that may be some of this on the on his teeth. And then some kind of a crazy violet color here, maybe for the interior of his mouth. And we'll use the radiant violet on that. So it's going to be sort of a weird grayish purple here instead of something that's just pink. So yeah, something a little different than just pink there for the for the inside of his mouth. Now I'm going to see if we can maybe uh, I don't know, put some kind of eyes in on him here. Let's grab the dark. It's uh, mostly mostly Van Dyke brown. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, Elite. Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure if you mean more of the Mini Monster Mayhem figures. Get a little dark over here. So, there's. I think there's still a couple of more. But I know this is one more pose right here. I think there was four poses all total. And, of course, uh, like I was saying, they also have unarmored versions. So we might try to print up the unarmored versions. And then we could do you know, a lot more of the skin tone. So that would be fun, too. I mean, yeah, the armor is really, really fun. But it would also be interesting to do some skin tone stuff as well. So that is there. We, go. we need a little sharp edge there. We're also going to now maybe... Uh, work some uh, some darks into the skin tone here and uh, perlene black we'll do perlene black which is a really dark green i'm gonna try and maybe also get some cooler greenish grays into some part of the skin tones that wasn't supposed to go there no big deal there's also a bunch of uh, straps here we're gonna have to make sure we get those straps set up to a couple of little, uh, shadow things and now let me go a little lighter here actually uh, just use it mostly radiant magenta and uh, some of the van dyke brown uh, basically making sort of a pinkish gray color here there and i might also do some of that in other areas here Okay, we'll just grab this as a blending brush. Uh, really, really quick painting that leather strap, right? Well, you know, why struggle? Why sit there and struggle when well, we can just plop some of this on here and grab a blending brush? We'll tap, 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 and have a nice, nice smooth blend in just a few seconds. It's just so much easier that way. Now, of course, if you have a whole bunch of thinner, uh, it's a little more tricksy to do that kind of thing. So it's usually your your thicker paint makes it a little bit easier to do. Yeah, I'm gonna also, uh, there's just brush strokes there, not so much about blending the color. It's just about taking away a little bit of the brush stroke and some of the edge. There you go. Bam really fast nice and easy so just grabbing some of this uh, magenta here We've got some straps on this side that we can do there's another one over here and I guess we'll throw a little bit of this again on the loincloth over here
There we go. Boy, we're going to have quite the uh, the Mordor troll army, that's for sure. And still I've never actually had a chance to play with, well, a big guy. I said, we, way, way back in the day, we're talking maybe 2012, I think. That was the last time that I got to play. Oh, we had uh, Guahir as part of the elf army. Yeah, that was the last time we had a chance to uh, try Big Guy. They did not have some of the abilities that they do now, that's for sure. Right, let me see if we can uh, do some kind of a horse motif here on this shield. And we're just going to do sort of a horse face here. And then uh, maybe make it a little bigger. Uh, maybe some kind of a Rohan motif to this. And again, if it we don't think it's going to work, we can just wipe this out. Just that easy. Wasn't really liking what I was seeing. We're going to try this again. Here, where's the... Where is the light color we were using there? I think it was this one. And maybe we do just, uh, maybe we just have a horse like this. Something more simple here. Nope, that's not good. Well, I guess that, that could work, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But for right now, I'm going to play around with some of the skin tone here. Yeah, I think we could still get some some lighter greens. We'll take the brilliant yellow pale. Set into this. You know, I better get a little bit of my radiant green into that. That was getting to be mostly just yellow. There, a little couple of lights on the skin to bring out some texture here. Same thing on the back of his leg. Like that. Now the hands really haven't had a chance to do very much on the hands at all. So we're going to just start to throw some of these lighter colors in here. Again, take the blending brush, chew it. Again, instead of fooling around with a whole bunch of layers here. I guess we'll lighten up the back of his hand and his arm. A little bit more, and then again, uh, back to the blending brush here. And again, lighten up the back of his fingers. How's about this one, too? We never really did get any lighter colors there. That's mostly just the original pre glaze from uh, well, about an hour and 40 minutes ago. And yes, indeed, less than two hours ago, this thing had uh, nothing but primer on it. You can always go back and watch the the highlights if uh, if you say there's nah, there's no way, there's no way that was done in less than two hours. You can go ahead and uh, check it out. It's always uh, always save them. go okay now let's maybe even transfer some of the greens out here now so elite the the different poses are dramatically different I mean uh, yeah they're they're definitely dramatically different of course here he's got he's got two hand uh, two-handed weapon there I don't know what the fourth pose looks like 
But I'm pretty sure there was four poses. Maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, but I'm pretty sure there were four different poses. But it, it would be really interesting to see what the ones without armor, and basically the same pose, but minus the armor, which, of course, Elite, that's, uh, that's the really nifty advantage of the digital sculpting, right? You can just kind of take the same sculpt and just put armor on it and then uh, obviously you would have that STL the uh, and then you'd still have the original one that had no armor on it and uh, just uh, a lot of uh, really fun advantages uh, especially when it comes to folks like us that especially for Lord of the Rings don't always have the easiest past path to uh, choices in miniatures that's for sure not always now i think this is as light as i can go up there so we're going to go the other way we're going to have to start to darken things down again i actually uh used the indigo in a while so let's break out some of the indigo some of the van dyke brown and we're just sort of making our own black here i might even think about some pearling black as a pin line wash in a couple areas of the skin but first, there's a, a nice little edge there. We had kind of lost track of that edge. Oh, this is the other nice thing, too, is see that uh, the armor there, you, you actually have a nice little gap in there, whereas if this was a cast miniature, most likely that all would have just been filled in by something, by resin, plastic, whatever. Just like we were talking about with the reins on things like horses, when you are doing the digital printing, the reins of the horse is not, uh, they can actually, they're not just a giant uh, blob of plastic or resin or metal. So I'm also trying to get a couple of more uh, darks here, but also uh, maybe starting to think about some darker scratches, maybe. Like up here. Don't have any of these just yet. And again, if we don't like something, I can just there. <laughs> Didn't really turn out the way I wanted, so uh, just got rid of it and did it again. It's so easy to eliminate anything that just is not quite what you want. Now, as we darken these areas a bit, we we'll see there's a little more contrast that emerges there and here let's see, we just got that darker blob we'll take our blending brush and we just you can see we're kind of pulling it this way and of course with that little bit of indigo coloration in it too now we have uh, also that extra little touch of color variety in it There you go, look at that. Very, very fun. Also, um, yeah, see, I think right here we could uh, stand for a little bit of that too. And a lot of this stuff just got very light. Now we're trying to not just make it darker, we are actually adding back some color too. That's that indigo, really dark blue. Super, super dark blue. And of course, also what happens are our lighter rust color. Well, that starts to stand out here. See, we just sharpened up that edge. We didn't do a line there, did we? We actually made a shape out of it here on the other side. So our highlight there was kind of blocky. Little something now. See, we got a nice hard edge right there. That is what makes things metallic. Is the reflected light, those hard edges. See over here, same deal. Look at that. See that, uh, that little bit of dark right there hardens up that edge. Now we can take our blending brush and we'll just pull that out this way. And we'll do some more of that on this side of M2. And uh, there, I'm trying to get a little bit of a scratch there or a chip or something. There. 
and it, re it just it happens so darn quickly. I mean, that is, if you let it, you, you kind of have to let the oils do their thing. And I know it can be difficult if you've only ever used the acrylics and now all of a sudden there's this very different mindset. Ah, uh, oh, look at that nifty bit of dark right there. So you, again, if you were going to do this with the acrylics, it would probably be really tough because you could not come back with this blending brush into what I just did there. Right, look, look at that. It just completely transformed that whole area. Same thing down. Look at this. There was no need for a bunch of layers, was there? And uh, see how that kind of turns now? We have the lighter area here. And you got dark over there, dark over there. So now this uh, kind of raises that shape like it's going up and over his forearm. Making sure that a little bit more of the Van Dyke brown gets into that. It's, there was a fair amount of indigo in there, so we're going to, again, get not just some harder edges here, but also, again, maybe some of these cut marks, too. Like so. And we can, you know, get some lights on the other side of that as well to maybe really emphasize that that's a, a deep cut in the armor. For whatever reason. And maybe see here uh, also, you know, a little, little tap tap of the indigo, and now we'll grab the blending brush. And it's not this, we're not pulling it, we're just tap tap. It's just straight up and down, almost a bit like Morse code. Ah, so here's another. Another area where I can just go boom like so. Also, yeah, let's throw a little bit of our uh, indigo over here too. So we threw in that darker coat. Now we'll just take our blending brush to tap that. What about here? I'm just going to use that same indigo on the skin here to find some more darks. Now, well, Acid, uh, sorry that you're kind of having a more difficult evening there, having to decompress and such. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we got some mellow stuff going on here, something nice and mellow that you can just sort of uh, chill, depressurize a little bit. Well, we, we could all certainly use a bit of that, couldn't we? There's, there's always plenty of things looking to elevate that blood pressure. Yeah, acid burn, I just, uh, I don't know, it's almost, uh, it's like, well, now they have a way to do it or something like that that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, I guess I've... Well, always had better things to do. Way, way more. Well, I guess I was just way too busy. Some people, maybe they're just not busy enough. And may, maybe they need to be a little more busy. And then they, they wouldn't have time for uh, for stuff like that. There we go. See, again, a couple of more little chip marks. Cut marks. Not chipmunks. <laughs> not chip. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. I've got those bunnies and those... I didn't do squirrel. Oh, bunnies and foxes. I'm going to have to find some of the dark sword figures that I was thinking about having little foxes and bunnies as, uh, as part of like little small diorama things. And then oh, maybe some of the... I think there's some of the older Lost Kingdoms figures that I'm going to have to try and print out. Maybe some like the Fungus uh, Army or something like that because I think I might have a way of printing those out now. Uh, we'll look at that extra little bit of dark right in there. See that? Look at that. A little bit of stippling and modeling in there. 
Did I do this? Ah, uh, no, we didn't get these. Armor bed's also gonna maybe uh, do a similar thing on the hammer here. So we'll do those little dots. We'll take our blending brush one more time. Ah, uh, boom, there we go. And then down here also, there you are. Look at that. See, there's a, a nice little edge that emerges there. Instead of highlighting stuff like crazy, maybe think the other way think the other way where well when in doubt make it darker that's uh, another one of our readings from the book of wobble right when in doubt make things darker because a mid-tone or a dark is generally going to be more interesting than a highlight I know most people they just think oh I'm just gonna make more highlights but really what you want to do is actually add more things like darks and just have your middle tones be more interesting and believe it or not the vast majority of this thing is a middle tone we know we could maybe uh, here let's do a little film film noir because I want to make the rust disappear is there a good yes yeah, even here look at this we'll do this there's no difference there <laughs> look at that see there's no difference in the light versus dark there so the rust completely disappeared because all that is is just a warmer color than everywhere else in the armor. It's not like it's lighter or darker or anything like that. It's the same value. However, right in here, we'll, we'll bring this back. You'll be able to see it. Boom, there you go, right? You can see that it's the warmer orange colors there. Not so much light versus dark. Uh, geez, uh, boy, elite, uh, you know, there's, uh, well, yeah, and I kind of understand in some ways there because we've, I've lived here a long time, and on one side or the other, there's always been some kind of person who's got issues. And it's really weird how that happens. <laughs> Now, we'll, uh, oh yeah, here's another darker edge. Ah, I'm gonna grab some of that Van Dyke brown. Can't to sharpen up that edge a little. Yeah, the bottom edge of this hammer too. We're, we got a lot of mid tones, but now we're gonna come back with some with some dark. Yeah, let me see if I can try to not not really a fan of that at all. I'm just gonna wipe that all out again. I'll tell you that's uh, that never gets old with the oil paints there. Also too, it's pretty much never gonna show up because it's pointed towards him. So I'm just gonna let that be uh, just some green. Thank you so much to our newest little hobbits. Wake, Abby, thank you so much. Somewhere in here we still have yet another Gandalf that we can bring out. There he is. It's like, ooh. Yeah, another case where a stick, uh, yeah, a glow stick, and a kitchen utensil. It's like, yeah, that, that's a cute little glow, glow stick you got there. He's like, well, it is good uh, in Moria. It's like, dude, I don't want to hang out there, man. That's scary. There's mimes in there. So, whew, you're telling me. Thank you so much for that follow. Appreciate that, Wake Abby. Can we... Uh, no, I'm not going to darken that. I will see about some edges down here, though. Can we put some of our rust down? It makes... I don't know, maybe in some ways it makes sense to have a bunch of rust there. The metal would be kind of exposed to the elements, I guess you could say. Uh, thanks so much, Armand Wolf, for posting the link to the uh, to the Patreon page again. We started up the latest army painting series, and that's going to involve uh, some fun times with the Army of the Dead, 
Lots of fluorescent oils, fluorescent green, fluorescent blue. Ah, there we are. Again, uh, could have been fooling around with a lot of lighter tones there, but guess what? Just hit it with the indigo. Best way. Best way to go. Ah, yes, a couple more darks over here, too. Yeah, I think we're going to also spice up that edge just a smidge. Now, these guys here, let's go back to some Van Dyke Brown. Okay. And uh, same over here. They've actually got uh, almost like some spines or whatever that are kind of poking through the skin here. Not so sure about those. Don't necessarily have to decide exactly right now what we want to do on those. Let me see here if I can also put some a uh, little different skin tone here on the this side of his hands. I'm gonna actually grab a little bit of the uh, Terra Rosa there. So here we're gonna do some uh, quick little bit of dry brushing on top of his fingers there. Keep that very simple. Get that little piece of fuzz off of the brush. Now I think up there is another spot. I'm going to take that perlene black. That's the really dark, uh, really dark green over here. Oh yeah, yeah, oh geez, I can actually go even darker than I thought. We're just going to do a little bit of pin line wash with that, I think. Right here. There's all this really nifty texture. Why not I just let the oils do the work? Well, and the miniature too. Let the miniature paint itself. Why should I have to do all the stinking work? Let the oils and the miniature do the work. So let's see how wet that looks there. It will not be very long till that basically looks drier than the surface around it. It's the darndest thing. I might do the same right here. So again, that's a bit of a pin line wash. Not every figure uh, lends itself to this. Not every color scheme is going to lend itself to this. Generally, I mean, let's say something like a sci-fi thing, probably not so much. Something like this where you have so many shapes and edges and that this is probably a much more ideal subject for that kind of a treatment. And like I said before, it's going to take a fair amount of thinner. Uh, the opaque colors will take more. Perlene black, not so opaque, so it won't take quite as much. I'm back to the indigo here because there's another edge. And you can see we're just going to add some of our dark to it. Look at that. We're going to add a little bit of a, a chip to that. Also harden up that edge. And any brush can be a blending brush. Even this one can be. All the paint is there is still wet. It's going to mix. It will most definitely mix together. Now, you don't have to always be working wet into wet. I mean, let's say you only have so much time, and you have to stop, and you are not going to get back to it, and it's all going to be dry. That's really not that tragic of a thing. That's something that I discovered that you can actually do a fair amount of basically blending where you take wet oils, you put them onto the dry oils, and then you take your blending brush. You can actually still fade that and, and make it soft because the oils are so easy to apply. They're not like acrylics. Now, where acrylics, you just basically have to add a whole ton of water to make those things uh, spreadable out over a miniature. The oils are not. The oils are more like that really fine 
sort of melted restaurant butter whereas the acrylics by comparison are more like peanut butter mixed with gravel and glue so you will be able to spread out those oil paints even if the other underlying applications are already dry no one more surprised to find that out than me once I did realize that well that's something I try to emphasize in those army painting series because guess what they're five episodes long stuff's going to dry even if I were just to film continuously and not even sleep or eat or run to the bathroom it would still dry because well, like this one here most of this is going to be dry in 24 hours the vast majority of this will be why because we're not stacking a whole bunch of paint on here and then there's certain colors of brown matter the radiant colors even the fast matte white here they just they are they just dry faster by their nature now this will see we don't really have much uh, light along the edges of this we have mostly darker stuff here and then some rust but yeah there we, we just needed some more action same on this side here there are actually individual plates here that got way too thick so we'll just come back look at that we just took some of it away try and work in a couple of more lights over here so now we can start to think about utilizing things like the fast mat to maybe see kind of highlight some of the uh, chips and such in the armor and didn't want to be jumping into that too fast now of course uh, this is another place where we could probably use some of our rust so I'm gonna take some of the brown matter here a little bit of the terra rosa and on that helmet there just hit that with a little bit of a rust and we'll kind of hit that with darker rust there since we've tried to do the freehand on there a couple of times it's just not really it's, it's not worth the time to fool around with that so we're just going to leave that be green it'll be a mystery and here's another case of uh Ah, here's another piece of armor. We need to maybe get a little bit lighter here along the side of that armor piece, and maybe here too. There, a little cut mark. Something along that edge. Now, these uh, straps here, I think we've gone in with a lot of the lighter tones. Maybe I need to come back in with some some more shadow color and that might just take the form of some Van Dyke Brown we'll just go with that here sure enough yeah that makes that look a little that's that's better now I'm gonna just grab something here as a blending brush we'll just use this Again, okay, a little bit of tap 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 there Uh, this side has a fair amount of dark in it already, so that, that worked out okay. Now, what about these? There's, uh, I might come back in with a little more dark over here. Uh, there's our indigo. Because we did put our rust in there. I don't know, maybe I need to just... Uh, double down on some lighter rust so here too again just a see a little bit of tap 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 even here just the the little morse code type thing there that was enough to blend that didn't even need to break out a blending brush to do that So let's see, yeah, we're at 2 hours and 11 minutes again from nothing to this in less, uh, just a little over 2 hours. 
Let me see if I can go a little later on his teeth. We'll uh, try for some brilliant yellow peel here, I think. Possibly, I'm thinking about putting a little bit of the Indian yellow on it. I don't know. Let's see what we have here. So it's not enough just to make it lighter. I'm also trying to give it a little bit of color here. So let's see if we can do that. Right here again on his teeth. Ironically enough, the paint has to be somewhat thick. I can't thin it down too much. Well, especially in this situation, because for one thing, it'll just sink down in between the teeth. But there's, I think, already some thin paint there. Ah, yeah, there we go. So now I have a whole row of teeth there. There wasn't any before. Same up here. Okay, that really does help. Let me see if I want any more of this where the eyes are. Let me see now if we can come back with maybe even the indigo. Something really dark here. And give him some eyes. One over there. I'm looking at the edge of our helmet here. Did we? Okay, we did solidify that edge there. We also did darken this down. Ah, here's another area. We could maybe use a little something again over here. See that? Now, let's look out. We're just literally holding the brush with these two fingers. That's it. Just those two fingers. Again, a nice light touch on that brush. It is so crucial. Let me see. Uh, that didn't really... supposed to be like... that. Uh, that's too much. Too much. Just gonna eliminate that. Just like the, the freehand that we tried doing on that shield. Maybe we'll give it another shot here. Let's see if we can try this again. Also too, I think the, the shield has uh, settled a little bit more. You know what I'm going to do is uh, we'll do something like this. I'm just going to start out with a this little row here. This circle and then we'll try and uh, create our horsies from there. I think this is my best angle here. Now we're trying to make a little bit of a, a face there for our horse. Who knows, maybe fourth try is a charm. I think we did this at least three times and wiped it out. I think part of it is also that the, uh, the paint here has settled a little bit more definitely has and we'll try and get another horse head over here but let me see if I can do some more of the knot work now behind this uh, horsey's head so there, there we go. there's the chin and now we'll try and draw some sort of a not work pattern here. And then we'll have it just to get an insinuation of it there. So maybe that even right there is enough. And the rest of this could just be uh, some rust or whatever. It's like that. There you go. Don't want to have to deal with anymore. There you go. So there's a little bit of a Rohan symbol right there. So Bithran, we 
we managed to do the Rohan symbol. It only took, took about four tries, but finally, finally got that going. Better late than never. So a little, little suggestion of a Rohan symbol there for what it's worth and maybe maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, slice marks here too there we go and it, it's funny because I had a whole bunch of extra shields all printed out it just uh, this is not what I thought I was going to be prepping today at all and I just I needed something did not have a chance to prep anything else, and I just thought this would be the fastest thing to prep. Uh, we go to get a little uh, lighter metal here along the edges of the shield for now. Something like that. Catch a couple of more lights here on the front of this. And that right there. This is, uh, I'm going to take that indigo color over here. Let's see what we can do right in here. It's uh, more of a mid tone. It's not really very light here. There's a bit more of that magenta in there. But it just really looks gray. It doesn't look pink or anything like that. This is another area where we didn't really do very much. It's not going to take too much here. I'm just going to do a quick little dry brush there. So that doesn't take very much. And now we'll uh, do some of the lightest area here. Kind of like what we did on the other side. But here again, look at, look at where you can you even see my hand. Nowhere near I can't. Look at this. That's how far back my hand has to be on the brush. Because my brush is sneaking in between two arrows in front of his leg so that I can actually get back here and do that. So I really had to take some extreme measures there to be able to make sure I could actually reach that. And now we're going to just do a little tap 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 here to soften that down. So now the interior of that's got a little more a little more shape to it. There's a couple of more areas here that also uh, could stand to get either some chips to them or dings or scratches or whatever. Uh, let me use this uh, blending brush here again. Fade some of that. Back to some darks here. Uh, we'll use the, uh, actually a little bit of Van Dyke Brown here. Okay, there's uh, and a couple more here. And I think, there, all right. So that hammer's got uh, some more dings in it. We'll also do these. We did the lighter portions of those, now doing, again, getting caught up on the darker portion of some of those. All right. Now I'm going to come back here with the... I'm going to look at this guy. I think I'm going to do a little bit of turquoise here. Believe it or not, I didn't think I'd be doing that much turquoise on the armor here, but I think that will be a nifty little change of pace from the warmer greens. It's typically something that I would put in, say, shinier armor more. Well, like this, you can see plenty of it there. Actually, Severus Blue would have been uh, kind of handy with that as well. Uh, 
and oh, let me do some of that on this side. We haven't really done much of that back here. Oh, a lot of it is pointed down towards the ground. This is pointed up here, so I'm going to try and get uh, some of that turquoise here with maybe a smidge of the Prussian blue. Well, it's kind of dirty Prussian blue right there. Where are we at? Here. Now. Nice. Now I'm just going to take my blending brush to this here and take some of that away. There we go. I think I might lighten that armor just a touch. Here we'll take our blending brush to it, which also has some Terra Rosa on it. That's going to be an interesting little blend right there. I will sneak in a little bit of uh, reflected light down here. Uh, you see a little bit of stippling right there. Again, trying to capture some of that texture. Uh, let me see, here's some of the really yellow pale. And, woof, that's. That might be injured. That's a brilliant yellow pale and a little bit of thalo green. Let's see what that's going to look like here. Hey, Thranuel, how you doing? Nice to see you. I hope that uh, the whole work schedule thing, I know it's always crazy each month. Uh, Maybe a... This month, not quite so crazy, although I know you have usually somewhere, was it, about 230 hours each month or so? I think that was 239 or something like that, or 236 in one month recently. Uh, okay, there's some more of our... A couple little lights right along there. So it's annual. I'm uh, well. I don't think that's gonna necessarily happen as much tonight. Maybe we'll try to do some of the editing on the next. Uh, we have the next army painting video. That's all filmed. It's just to uh, have to try and get down to editing and rendering that. Oh, well, that's good. That's good, annual. So this this one here again we started this uh, two hours and fifty three minutes ago. I'm just gonna throw a couple of uh, stars on that maybe I don't know. We'll throw a couple of more lights on the helmet there. Maybe that will get some more light on it. And that's a skin tone, so I'm going to grab a little bit of this uh, green over here. Some of the Terra Rosa together. Sort of a muted, crazy greenish brown in a way. We're going to let some of that skin tone just be dark in the crevices there. Now there, that, that pin line wash, that did pretty well to get some, some indigo down in that, uh, that area between the shoulders. I think there's a one little area here where we got the light in there. I need to sneak some in here, and uh, I guess we'll go back to that. That indigo mix that was kind of successful down in there. A little bit more of our magenta there. And that's going to go right down ah, into that, that part of our metal. And again, uh, we could throw some more rust in there if we wanted to, but. We have a lot of rust already. I don't know how 
how much more? We don't want to put too much there. Hey, Wilderman, how you doing? Nice to see you, Wilderman. Uh, actually, well, Wilderman, if you wanted to post anything in the chat, there are some things that maybe you've been working on. Uh, if you want to do that, that would be cool. Yeah, okay, there we go. It's, again, not the entire edge, but just catching some of it. Again, this is a, a 3D printed troll from Mini Monster Mayhem. It's one of several poses. Uh, they also have, like I said, they have an unarmored version of each of these poses. Now, I haven't had a chance to print those out yet. Like, I don't even, like, I can't even remember which, uh, which month these are from, which release. I'm going to have to, uh, go, go through and, and see which month that was so I can try and find those files again. Oh, a steampunk coach and getting ready to paint it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Waterman. Uh, every so often, Mini Monster Mayhem does some not Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings figures. Like, these are not Mordor trolls, Mordor trolls. Yeah, I get, uh, and everybody, please give Wilderman a follow also. So, Wilderman, yeah, if you wanted to post uh, some pictures of the steampunk coach that you've been working on. Let people see that. Okay. Yeah, that that's working pretty well. I think there's a couple other areas over here that maybe could also do with some scratches and other such things. Maybe even our armor down here. We haven't really done too much with that. There's a blending brush down here. So we just slapped a bunch of lighter colors in there, and now we're just going to fade and manipulate some of those. 